Okay, so uh, today we are going to talk about cancer prevention and screening. Screening basically is a process which aims to detect cancer before appearance of symptoms. It can be done by a clinical examination, radiology, blood test, or test of other body fluids, endoscopy, or then molecular or genetic screening. Now, the concept of screening is that if you can look for an early disease and if you can identify the cancer early, it's and if you treat it, then there is a reduction in mortality from the disease. And early detection also lead to what is called as a stage shift. That instead of detecting a ca cancer in third or fourth or late stage, you are detecting it early in the first or second phase. But this is not a true benefit. True benefit is reduction in mortality. There are certain terms which are used. One of them is called lead time. Now, uh, basically, if you look at this uh, curve uh, or the line, the line starts when the cancer starts and line ends when there is a death occurs. It is changed into three colors. And if you see that if you do a normal patient, normal patient is uh, identified in this period when patient becomes symptomatic. And this is the survival time that you get. Lead time is the time uh, by which period you detect the cancer early. If you detect the cancer here, the survival becomes longer. And the time gained is a lead time. So this is the time difference without or with screening. Then another thing is called length time. Length time is the time interval between two screenings and appearance of disease. And uh, it determines how frequently screening should be done and depends upon biological behavior of disease being screened. And the cancers which develop between two screenings are called interval cancers. The screening basically uh, can be done on the population basis, which is called population screening, where everybody in a population within a specific age or genetic or a gender group can be screened. Opportunity screening is uh, when, a, when an opportunity arises, an individual is screened. Selective screening is uh, when you screen people who are at high risk compared to normal population, like uh, patients who have a genetic or family history of cancers or those who have a known risk factors. So it can be population screening, opportunistic screening or a selective screening. So the policy that we employ in India is basically an opportunistic screening. There are no national population screening guidelines or uh, programs available in the country. So what we do is mostly the opportunistic screening and we also do selective screening. Screening has some problems. One of them is false positive rates. That means person does not have a cancer, but the test is positive. So you think patient has a cancer. And then to prove or disprove, you have to do more tests and more invasive investigations. Or it could be a false negative. That means there is a cancer, but the test is negative. And this ability to detect cancer or not able to detect cancer by a particular investigation will depend upon sensitivity and specificity of that particular test or the screening modality that is applied. Sensitivity is ability to test. And the specificity is uh, ability to test correctly and identifying those without the disease. So if you can identify 100% who have the disease, sensitivity is 100%. And if you are able to identify those who do not have disease, then, then your specificity is 100%. So no test has a 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity. So what we have is a mixture of the two, say 90% sensitivity, 80% specificity, something like that. So what are the screening modules or modalities available to us? For breast cancer, you have breast self-examination, physician examination and mammography. For cervix, you have pap smear. You also have HPV. For colon, you have fecal rectal blood, colonoscopy. For prostate, you have PSA, digital rectal examination. 
for oral cancers you have examination by trained health workers for lung cancers you have x-ray chest or you have bronchoscopy ovarian cancer screening is done by ultrasound and esophagus and stomach can be screened by upper gi endoscopy so for most of the common uh, cancers you have one or the other modality which can be used for screening i'll talk about one or two screening programs which are available worldwide uh, not necessarily in india so uh, us has a breast cancer screening program and it says that every woman between 40 to 44 should have a choice to start annual breast cancer screening with mammograms that means up to 44 years it is not mandatory but opportunity should be given to every woman between 40 and 44 to choose above the age of 45 till the age of 54 a woman should get mammogram every year above the age of 55 she should have a mammogram every two year or she can opt for a yearly screening whichever uh, she feels is the best and uh, how long a screening should continue screening should continue as long as a woman is in good health and is expected to live 10 more years or longer so when the survival expectancy is minimum 10 years you screen then everybody or all women which are screened should be familiar with known benefits limitation potential harms which are linked to breast cancer screen cervix is one of the commonest cancers in this part of the world cervical cancer testing should start at the age of 21 and all women under the age of 21 uh, a woman under the age of 21 should not be tested so uh, pap smear testing should start at the age of 21 between 21 and 29 it should only be pap smear and it is recommended that the hpv testing should not be used up to 29 years but for women who are above the age of 30 year they should have what is called as co-testing or they should have a pap smear plus an hpv test which should be done every five years and sometimes people say that it should be done every three years so ideally every woman above the 21 years of age should have a pap smear above 30 years of age you should have pap smear plus an hpv test or what is called as co-testing above the 65 years if the woman is healthy she should continue with the uh, screening or if in last 10 years she has had normal result then you can stop testing a woman above the age of 65. the women who have a history of a uh, previous uh, pre-cancer like uh, l cell h cell or uh, they have tested hpv positive they should continue screening even after the age of 65. Then there are certain group of women who have been uh, vaccinated for human papilloma virus. It is recommended that every woman before the onset of sexual activity should be vaccinated against human papilloma virus because it is one of the commonest virus uh, which is associated with cervical cancer in this part of the world. And there is a definite benefit of uh, vaccination against HPV. So every woman should be vaccinated. And if a woman is vaccinated, she should still be screened. Because the vaccination which is available are quadrivalent. That means they prevent HPV infection by only four type of HPV. But in number total, there are more than 100 HPV. So that she can still get infected by other 96 uh, type of HPV. For oral examination, should be done by a dentist or a trained health worker. If you find a precancerous lesion like a leukoplakia, erythroplakia, it should be treated. And uh, those where there are habits like tobacco, uh, smoking, or alcohol use, they should be uh, getting the examination every six months. So screening is different from prevention. As in screening, we are looking for cancers which have already occurred. It can be combined with preventive strategies, especially in high-risk group. So with this, I'll come to cancer prevention. So screening was detection of cancer before it becomes symptomatic. 
now prevention is from uh, preventing the cancer from developing so you want that a cancer should not develop in a particular group you take preventive actions and most of the preventive actions will depend upon what causes cancer so if you know cause of the cancer you remove the cause cancer can be prevented so obviously i'll be starting with tobacco because almost 50% of the cancers that occur in india are tobacco associated cancers uh, the tobacco smoke is usually a mixture of more than 4000 chemicals and of these there are more than 55 known carcinogen in tobacco smoke most of the carcinogens which are there are pah polycyclic uh, aromatic hydrocarbons nitrosamines and uh, nnk which is the best known carcinogen so they are all there in the uh, tobacco smoke they are pre carcinogens and they are activated in the body by the cytochrome p450 or cyp one a uh, system into carcinogens which are again metabolized by glutathione s transferase system to neutralize them so whenever there is an imbalance between the glutathione s transferase and the cytochrome system the carcinogenesis occurs these chemicals will cause dna adduct formation and will cause gene mutations and then there will be events that will lead to cancer as i said the balance between detoxification and activation determines the susceptibility so uh, someone uh, may get cancer by smoking just a few cigarettes and somebody may be able to metabolize even a larger smoke but whether you can or you cannot nobody knows so it is much better to remove the tobacco as uh, an agent from your life years the focus had been the individual who smokes and the cessation strategy was quitting making the individual smoker or his tour quit but now slowly we are moving towards community and uh, it has been realized that the time a person starts smoking or chewing is anywhere between 14 to 18 or 20 years of age uh, usually during the school uh, time and most of the people who get addicted to uh, tobacco or alcohol are under peer pressure the show off so uh, the approach to tobacco cessation has now moved towards the community approach where uh, people go to schools colleges and and, and uh, media campaigns and try people not to start tobacco so it has been realized that not to start tobacco is a better strategy than cessation of tobacco so we have pharmacological cessation therapies where nicotine supplementation is used we have community state interventions policy strategies tobacco taxes the cost of tobacco and cigarettes is higher because of there is a 300 400 500 percent tax on it then there is a mass media campaign before if you watch movies on tv before every movie you will find uh, a tobacco anti-tobacco ad every time a hero or a heroine is seen smoking or drinking you will find a banner smoking is dangerous for health uh, then there are litigations and settlements that means people file cases against the tobacco companies when they get cancer and then there had been settlements which has also been awarded the second thing that you can modify in your lifestyle is diet so there are few things in diet which can if you modify those you can prevent cancer so one of them is a dietary fat dietary fat and obesity is known to cause cancer so one of the uh, thing is to reduce the fat content of your diet and reduce the calorie intake on daily basis or especially the calorie that come from the fat so if you can avoid obesity and if you can reduce the dietary fat calories cancer can be prevented to a certain extent second thing is dietary fiber this is basically a plant polysaccharide and uh, which is resistant to hydrolysis by the digestive enzymes and could be soluble fibers or insoluble fibers and the advantage of using these fibers is that they are basically bulking agent 
they are hygroscopic they absorb water form a bulk and this bulk reduces the colonic transit time and as the colonic transit time decreases the uh, contact time of carcinogen with the colonic mucosa also decreases so fiber intake has been shown to be one of the causes to prevent uh, especially the colonic cancers the fourth component is uh, fruit and vegetable these are basically rich in anti uh, carcinogenic substances like uh, antioxidants minerals uh, they are good source of fibers potassium carotenoids vitamin c folate and there are a lot of uh, other vitamin and minerals which are available in fruit and vegetables and uh, increasing the intake of fruit and vegetables actually uh, has been shown to reduce uh, energy intake as well as cancer then there are retinoid carotenoids and other micronutrients uh, these has been used in chemo prevention activities but none of them has been found to be very effective actually in chemo prevention but then uh, dietary micronutrients are important of the retinoids which has been used the commonest one used was atra other than that 13 13c retinoic acid and a 9c 9 cis retinoic acid has been used and uh, they uh, have been found to have uh, chemo preventive activity when they are combined with agents now basically retinoids act as chemo prevention action through retinoic acid receptors also known as rars which are of three types alpha beta and gamma and uh, these receptors are dna binding transcription factors that can activate or suppress the expression of many genes so people say that if you give retinoic acid and then activate the rars then the cell growth and differentiation and apoptosis can be controlled so so far we talked about the good agents in the food now we talk about the harmful agents in the food which are called dietary carcinogens these are food additives pesticides fertilizers and then environmental contaminants they are all carcinogens and they also go to the body through your uh, diet so that is why you will see a lot uh, more about organic food so when you go for organic food the organic food is pesticide and the uh, fertilizer free so you don't get urea or you don't get uh, pesticides in your food so that is why you see a movement against the uh, organic food Mo movement towards the organic food one of the preventive agents that has been used is the cox inhibitors the cox inhibitors basically inhibit the activity of enzyme prostaglandin h synthesis and has been found to have chemo prevention action some of the uh, drugs like aspirin uh, celecoxib has been used uh, for chemo prevention uh, programs but none of them are approved as a chemo preventive agents as i said obesity is a risk factor so obviously exercise physical activity is a preventive action recommended is 20 minutes 3 days a week minimum to 30 minutes 5 days a week that is maximum higher levels of activity reduce the risk of cancer and uh, physical activity both in leisure time as well as the occupational activity is counted so recommended is that you should do 30 minutes five days a week heavy physical exercise and uh, that will reduce the chances of cancer developing in your body now surgery has a very little role to play in cancer prevention and when the surgery is being done for prevention of cancer it is called prophylactic surgery the uh, prophylactic surgery is being used in situations where we know that the chances of development of cancer are higher like inflammatory bowel disease or patients where there is a crypto orchidism where the chances of uh, testicular cancer development is higher so these are the cases which were candidate for prophylactic surgery second group of people who are uh, candidate of uh, prophylactic surgery are the one which has 
some specific genetic disorders which make them more prone to develop cancers. So these are the people where a prophylactic uh, mastectomy or oophorectomy may be advised for patients who are BRCA1 or BRCA2 positive. And uh, I'm sure you all must be uh, recognizing this female here, Angelina Jolly. Uh, she was a BRCA uh, carrier and uh, she opted for a bilateral prophylactic mastectomy. So uh, that is how the prophylactic surgery has come into play. Other than that, you can treat precancerous lesions like erythroplakia, leukoplakia, submucous fibrosis, which has a higher chance of malignant transformation. You can treat patients with adenoma or dysplasia by surgery and thereby reducing the malignant transformation. So prophylactic surgery can be done. Other than these, uh, one of the major issue nowadays that is facing the global or thing is the pollution. You have a global warming and because of that you have a high air pollution, water pollution rates. You have ozone dwindling because of which UV light uh, UV light is much higher. So indoor and outdoor pollutions give rise to lung cancers. They can also give rise to many other cancers like bladder cancers. Water pollution, especially heavy metal toxicity, can give rise to hepatobiliary cancers. Sunlight, UV light can give rise to melanomas, as is seen in Australia. There is a higher rate of melanoma transformation to people who are exposed to sunlight. And uh, it is important that uh, one should not get directly exposed to sunlight and use uh, uh, sun creams when uh, the exposed parts are exposed exposed parts are exposed to sunlight then lastly there are certain viruses which are associated with cancer and if you can stop the transmission of these viruses you will be able to prevent cancers the first one is hpv as i said cervical cancer the other two the hepatitis b and c virus they are associated with the uh, liver cancers hepato hepatocellular cancers and then Epstein-Barr virus, which is associated with some of the lymphomas. Then you have Kaposi's sarcoma virus, which is associated with, uh, which is mostly seen in AIDS-related sarcoma cases. So there are a few viruses which are uh, cancer causes, and the transmission can be prevented. Like, for example, the hepatitis B and C transmission is reduced by, uh, because these are blood-borne infections. They, the mode of transmission is either use of infected syringes like in drug addiction or uh, the use of blood products. So when you uh, stop sharing syringes and stop drug abuse, plus uh, every bag of blood which is issued from the blood bank is tested for hepatitis B and hepatitis C, the chances of transmission reduces. So you try to reduce the transmission of hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Human papilloma virus is sexually transmitted. So the prevention is very simple. Keep to a single partner. Say no to multiple partners. Always have a protected sex. And uh, abstinence is the best modality of prevention. Now this is my last slide. David Setcher was the first black uh, Surgeon General of the United States. And uh, what you see on your screen is his visiting card. This is how his visiting card look like. It has four mantras for reduction of cancer. The first is moderate physical activity, five days a week, 30 minutes daily. Then he says avoid toxins, tobacco, drugs and alcohol. Third, Eat at least five servings of fruit and vegetables a day. Most of us eat three times a day, but uh, people say that if you eat smaller quantities five times in a day is much better. And uh, if you if you happen to go to United States, you will find that majority of the people during their lunch hour uh, or in their lunch eat only the salad. They don't eat anything else. 
um, mostly lettuce is consumed quite a lot during the lunch time there so uh, they have a carbohydrate breakfast in the morning or a protein breakfast in the morning then they have only green leafy vegetables and fruits in the afternoon and then again a carb uh, carb protein diet in the evening that is that is how they schedule uh, their carb and uh, protein intakes lastly the responsible sexual behavior and abstinence wherever possible thank you